Peyton Manning joins us, Hall of Fame quarterback, two-time Super Bowl champ. He's joining us now on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. Number one overall pick in the 1998 draft. Hey, pal, thanks for joining me, man. This is pretty cool. Hey, Ryan, thanks for having me, pal. Good to be with you. Yeah, you too. Um, watching the draft 24 years later, what, what do you remember about our draft process in 98? What Going into it and what, it, what you expected? Yeah, it certainly is a lot different now, it seems like. Um, uh, um, obviously, the actual draft day itself is completely different, right? We were in New York. Um, I think there were four of us, if I recall. Yeah. I think it was me, you, Charles, and I want to say Curtis Enos was yep. was there as well, who got taken by the Bears. Uh, Andre Wadsworth uh, wasn't there, and um, uh, Randy Moss, who I think went 17, wasn't there, but... Uh, you know, I, mean, I just remember it being an exciting time. You know, obviously kind of curious uh, about getting your you know, your first major job started. You know, and so I was kind of anxious, if I recall, just kind of uh, you know, looking forward to, you know, kind of making it official and getting to that team and getting the playbook and getting going. But uh, it was fun being with you and, you know, and Charles. Obviously, we've been together just a few weeks before or, or a few months before at the Heisman Banquet with uh, with, with uh, with Randy, and uh, um, it was just cool, you know, you, you know, to kind of see everybody in that room, knowing that they were all going to be playing in the NFL uh, um, um, any minute now. You know, um, I, I want to describe to everyone who's listening, you know, kind of the atmosphere around Canton last August. Um, you know, I had the honor to be there and celebrate your induction, which, which, what struck me was the the amount of former teammates of yours that were there to honor you. That had to feel unbelievably special uh, in, in a very impactful and important night that they were there. That That's the one thing that really stood out to me. And that, that says a lot about you as a teammate. What did you feel well, in that moment? Well, I appreciate that. Like I said, I appreciate you being there as well. And to me, teammates are, you know, kind of what it's all about. And it doesn't matter uh, uh, what level you played at, you know, um, I had high school teammates there. I had college teammates, and you know, I had teammates from from Indianapolis and Denver. And uh, you know, once a teammate, always a teammate, regardless of which team uh, you played with that teammate on. And uh, it, it's just a special bond, you know, knowing how hard you've worked to try to accomplish a goal. And uh, you know, maybe you've struggled together, maybe you've reached the pinnacle together. But uh, it's definitely a special bond. And, and so that probably was one of the coolest things for me as well to have all those teammates and different people that have been a part of your football journey all kind of there in one room. Everybody's all over the country now, you know, living life and doing different things, but to have them all right there in one room was certainly a special moment. Yeah, it was fun to be there. It was neat to be a part of it. You and I were going to be linked on my end forever, regardless uh, of the success that we had. And sure enough, uh, you continue to impress. And you may be one of the most – um, um, individuals that I, I would resent because of your success, but I can continue to watch you just be the epitome of, of, of what you want to be. And, and you and Ashley did something this week um, to honor your, your teammate, Demarius Thomas at Georgia Tech. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, the endowment that was, that was formed for, for your teammate. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, that Hall of Fame banquet actually in August was the last time we saw Demarius. Yeah. Uh, he was there, and, you know, Demarius always loved spending time uh, with our kids. They loved seeing him. He was great to them out there at Saturday practices when we were playing for the Broncos or, uh, you know, down by the locker room after games. And it, it was great to great to see him and just still, still haven't quite processed what happened uh, in December and just can't believe he's gone. But wanted to carry on his legacy and his memory by – honoring him, uh, uh, but also paying it forward and uh, creating a scholarship at Georgia Tech uh, for someone from the same county as Demarius to give them an opportunity to go reach their dreams. I mean, Demarius' story is incredible, what all he endured uh, as a young person and then making it to Georgia Tech and then being a first-round draft pick by the Broncos and all-pro, you know, winning the Super Bowl. So, uh, you talk about overcoming adversity, and so to give someone else that same opportunity. But what's really cool, I think, Ryan, is that Georgia Tech kind of stepped up. In you know, in addition to uh, Ashley and I forming the scholarship, Georgia Tech stepped up 
and they're going to every August 8th, 8-8, which was DT's number with the Broncos. He was number eight with Georgia Tech. They're going to hand out the number eight jersey to one of their top senior leader players. That's somebody that just defines DT from a accountability standpoint, a toughness standpoint, an unselfish standpoint. And, and to me, there's a lot of responsibility that's going to come with wearing that jersey. So that will keep his legacy alive forever. We're speaking with Peyton Manning, Pro Football Hall of Famer, two-time Super Bowl champion. Um, Transition from the NFL uh, is is tough for for every player. I mean, regardless of success, you always feel like you could have done something more. And what's helped you with that? Because uh, for people who are looking at it, it it seems like a pretty seamless transition for you to a a place where you you have purpose and there's comfort in in that. How, How have you gone about it? Well, yeah, um, I mean, it's certainly a challenge, I think, as you adjust. uh, uh, You certainly miss, you know, kind of being a part of that team and being around 53 guys uh, every single day in the building, you know, lifting weights and uh, meeting together and, you know, traveling together to games. Um, So it's a new routine, but uh, to me, you kind of find different teams to kind of be a part of, right? Some, you know, philanthropy teams and maybe some business teams and whatever it may be. But uh, but I think you still apply a lot of the same lessons uh, that you learned in football about teamwork and communication and, you know, having a somewhat of maybe of a disciplined schedule, if you will, a lot of the things that you learn, right? I mean, football is all about schedules and, uh, you know, being on time and, and being accountable that way. So, um you know, Ryan, I've really tried to kind of take it one year at a time. You know, I've always been envious of some of these football players that always knew what they wanted to do, and they have these five-year and ten-year plans. That's not me. You know, I've kind of tried to do a little bit of an evaluation each year to see kind of what I want to maybe do this year, what I don't want to do. But the main priority is is having time to, you know, be at my be at our kids, you know, baseball and softball games this weekend and help out with their flag football teams in the fall or uh, tackle football, whatever it may be. And and so that's been priority number one, but also trying to stay busy and stimulated at the same time. Yeah, you you introduced with ESPN this year the Manning cast, and it's been a a hit. You and your brother, you you have a lot of fun with that. Um, Tell us what that's been like a little bit. It's been fun to watch and, and, and see you guys grow throughout the year. Yeah, no, thanks. I mean, I, I'm not sure. You know, sometimes I'm kind of on there, and I'm like, I chose to do this as my brother <laughs> is making various forehead jokes, or he likes to call it uh, five head. So sometimes I wonder why I volunteer to do this. But uh, but it is fun to do it with him, right? You know, we don't get to see each other uh, as much as we used to, you know, living in, uh, living in Denver and living in New Jersey. So that's been a great way to – uh, stay close with Eli and, you know, ha- and have something to work with him on and then to kind of do it in a different way, right, to try to uh, kind of gear toward, you know, maybe a younger audience of, uh, you know, trying to watch the game as if you were watching it on the couch or uh, at a bar with your friends and, you know, having guests on there that love football uh, in all different aspects of life, like Condoleezza Rice to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. the- the number one thing in common is that all those people love football and I like being around people that love football and and kind of hearing their stories. So uh, we're going to do it again next year. And uh, it certainly was fun to do. Well, if you want to get back at Eli a little bit, let's just holler at me. I'll call mom. She'll get the, she'll get the Heisman trophy photo from our year (laughs) with my, with my brother sitting in between Cooper and Eli and those haircuts and the outfits (laughs) Olivia and Marsha put them in. That that's, that's a golden one for you. Those were special. Those were special (laughs) haircuts. All right. I'm going to get you out of here. I appreciate you taking the time. This has been a, a, a lot of fun. Um, What's your advice for Russ in Denver, right? After leaving a, a franchise so intertwined with his identity, you did the exact same thing. What advice are you giving him in this new direction he's going to be with in Denver for the Broncos? Yeah, I've tried to just be there. You know, um, I've tried to be there as a resource for Russell if he has questions. I think Russell, uh, you, you know, you know, figures out a lot of these things because of his his preparation and his attention to detail. But I have shared with him a couple things uh, that helped me in my transition. And I've also shared that with the Broncos, you know, with coach Hackett who reached out to me and kind of had a bunch of questions. Hey, how can we 
help Russell in this transition? You know, it's a lot of little things, Ryan. It's, you know, hey, can you implement the same cadence that he had in Seattle, right? That's one less thing he has to think about. Uh, any common plays that he really liked in Seattle, I would put those in the Broncos playbook. And, and Denver did that with me uh so when I signed here as a free agent, I was, of course, coming off an injury, so that was on my mind. So that just the Broncos did a lot of things to help make the transition much easier, and I think Coach Hackett would do that with Russell. But he's all in. He's wired that way. Um, he's already established himself as a leader uh, in this locker room and you know, with these young receivers, and uh, I'm expecting big things out of him starting this year. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. It will be exciting to see that kind of quarterback play in Denver once again since your retirement. Uh, I'm going to let you go here. Uh, before I do, though, I just uh, – uh, it, it's been an honor. Uh, you know, you and I met on a phone call in 1997 because our SIDs <laughs> thought it would be a good idea because we were going to be linked, and sure enough, and the rise that you had, the fall that I did, but no matter what, um, you didn't look at me any different. And uh, that is incredibly meaningful to me and my family, and that's why I still consider you a, a friend, and I've loved to see your success over the time, you and Ashley and the family and, and everybody. So I appreciate you taking the time today, Peyton. Well, well Ryan, I appreciate the friendship and uh, have great respect for you and your uh, perseverance and uh, keeping the faith. And uh, it, it's been uh, a, a, it's been special to have you as a friend. And like I said, it's hard to believe we had that phone call back there in the fall of uh, – of uh, 97, and I, I want to say, uh, I can't remember, I think it was the ESPYs, the Heisman, the draft, uh, the rookie photo shoot, so uh, uh, um, a preseason game we played there in, in 1998 that was not very good football, probably <laughs> on, on either team. Uh, I was trying to avoid throwing interceptions in the preseason because I knew I was about to throw a lot in the regular season, but anyway, I appreciate you having me on, pal, and uh, certainly wish you all the best. All right, let's get some golf this off season. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, bud. Take care. All right. Peyton Manning, everybody, Pro Football Hall of Famer, uh, two-time Super Bowl champ, five-time MVP, and number one overall pick in the 1998 NFL Draft. Uh, and a good man, guy that's been uh, incredibly, um, an incredible human being to me, right? Him and his family. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he reached out and wrote to me while I was in prison. Uh you have a similar story, Chris Brockman, when you were a kid in high school. You wrote to him. Oh, man, I loved Peyton Manning oh. when I was growing up. I played quarterback in high school. I was extremely mediocre. And uh, I wrote Peyton one year uh, when I was maybe going to be the starter and asked him for some advice, what his favorite plays were, whatever. Obviously never expecting to hear back. And uh, I didn't exactly hear back in the way that I wanted, but – uh, one day over the summertime, a big envelope from the University of Tennessee showed up at my house, and it was an autographed 8x10 from Peyton Manning, uh, personalized to Chris. Uh, Peyton Manning, it's still framed up in my mother's house uh, to this day. It, was, it meant a lot to me then. It means a lot to me now. Uh, obviously, a great player, great person. The, the stories uh, are plentiful like that. And the ironic thing was, is that the letter I got, I remember my roommate, he brought it up to me, and it's what I was doing at the time because I was in such a dark place. No matter what mail or correspondence came in, I didn't care who it was from. Coach Gilbride reached out to me, former teammates, and this is from Peyton Manning. And I just tore it up. Never read it. Still haven't asked him what he said in it. I don't know. It's just, uh, wow. That's where I was at. But, but getting something like that, even though I reacted negatively to the moment of it, it it bolstered me, right? It gave me hope, hope that I didn't know existed that ultimately got me to the place where I'm hosting the Rich Eisen show and talking to my my friend who had a Hall of Fame career, right? I mean, that's that's what building each other up as human beings is about. And so that was a lot of fun. So cool to have him on the show. Uh, really good insight. Maybe he'll uh, um, he'll return the favor, and I'll do a little Manning cast maybe this year, talk a hey. little football. We'll see. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.